Furstenberg Premium Lager. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. I've got one here that was kindly donated by a subscriber and a mate as well, Mark. Cheers for that, mate. It's the Furstenberger Premium Lager. Now, this is a beer from the Black Forest region in southwest Germany. And they've got a bit of a, an ambiguous history. They say they've been going since 1283, but it's that's debatable. They thrive on that, but there is records of a brewery in the region going back to 1283. There was a couple of a couple of breweries actually, and you know they've taken on this sort of heritage and they've run with it, even though in the 18th century the beer brewing stopped in that region because of the wars that were going on and the price of the malt which was very high indeed same thing happened in the united kingdom as well there was a lot of tax put on malt because it was um it was scarce and hence the reason pale malt pale malted beer became fashionable anyway um they were they was they carried on brewing a bit later on in the uh, 1700s and the beer became one of the favourite beers of Otto von Bismarck. Remember him? Head of the German state during the Franco-Prussian War. And it was also the favourite beer of Kaiser Bill, or Kaiser Wilhelm, who was uh, the German Kaiser at the time of the First World War. And he was called Kaiser Bill by the British. And um, yeah, so it's got a bit of a, a royal connection on this one um i've heard a story about them which was mm, shall we say a bit dodge i mentioned it in my other review of the hofbrau no not hofbrau what am i talking about koenig's koenig's brow beer that i just reviewed which was pretty fucking average to be honest but they there's a there's a, a german agricultural award called the DLG Awards in Germany, and they are quite they were quite prestigious. And how it would work is um, brewers would send samples of their beer from two different batches, and these agricultural people would um, deduce the chemical breakdown of it and basically check it for its consistency, the quality of the ingredients, etc., etc. But this lot, Furstenberg, were caught doing something very dodgy indeed. They'd sent beer from a, two beers, or two supposed different batches, which actually came from the same batch, and they changed the dates. And one of the head technicians there grasped them up, obviously a disgruntled employee, and he was soon afterwards aggressively made redundant, or in other words, he got fired. His ass was fired. Um, which is understandable, really. But, yeah, that's a fucking snaky move, which sort of puts a little bit of a, a downer on this one. There's quite a few beers in this range. They do a Pils, they do a Wheat Beer, and they do Rattlers, Furstenberg, and, you know, they're owned by the Brow Holding International Company, who also own Paulana. They own Kulmbecker, who own a lot of beers. So if you can imagine, this is like a... This is like the top of the tree, and you've got Paulana, who own quite a few breweries. You've got Kornbacher, who own quite a few breweries, and Sudwest, who own this lot. And of course, Sudwest in German means southwest, and this is where this is from. Anyway, that's all boring. Let's get on to the beer. <music> 
Right, 500ml bottle, 5.3% ABV. It's got 21 on the IBU stakes, so it does sound like it's quite a, a sweetish lager. Uh, the first Firstenberg Brewery is situated in the town of, I'm not even going to pronounce that because I'll get it wrong. Uh, well, I, <laughs> I said I'm not going to pronounce it, and here he is pronouncing it. Donaushingen, Donaushingen, I don't know, something like that, in the Black Forest. It first began to sell its beer to the public in 1283. Debatable. Since then, it has gained an enviable worldwide reputation for taste and quality of its beers. First, the Berg Premium Lager is light in colour and refreshing, clean and smooth taste. Undoubtedly one of the fine examples of handcrafted, bottom fermented lager. Ingredients, malt with, malt with, malt with barley, hop extract, hops and hop extract. Well, at least that's a bit more promising than the Koenigsbrau stuff that was making a big thing about it being an entry level beer, which doesn't instill confidence. And of course it didn't taste that great either. Let's hope this stuff does. Right. Furstenberg. Now you can get this in, I think it's Tesco's, I think done it, and Asda did it as well. I've seen it, but never bought it. And I think it's been available over here for quite some time. It's just never, never interested me, never come onto the radar. So there you go. Let's get it into the glass. Here it is, nice uh, golden straw color. Reasonable amounts of carbonation, small bubbles, tightly packed, one finger, white head. What we're getting on the nose. Very sweet, grassy, slight spirit alcohol in there. And some very slight hoppy notes. Some lemon citrus there too. It's smelling reasonably good. The aromas aren't strong, but they are there. Right. Here it is in a glass. Let's get it down the hatch. Some vol, as they say in Germany. Well, one thing, that is slightly better than the Hofbrau. Uh, the, I can't just keep saying, stop saying that. It's the Koenigsbrau. Or was it Koenigshof? It's the, the other one I just reviewed. It does taste better than that. There's a lighter mouthfeel. Quite... Quite a nice doughy malt on that. Finish is quite abrupt. It's got a nice malty sweetness to it, and there's a lemon citrus running through it. But again, like the other stuff, there is a, a slight sulfury taste to it. But it isn't bad. It doesn't taste like a macro brewed lager, which the other stuff did. Um, it's not as good as some of the other German lagers that are around. Of course, it doesn't compare with the Bavarian stuff. Um, there's other North German lagers and Pilsners, which I think are better than this. But it's okay. It's not bad. This is what this is cold. It's come out of the fridge. Just, it's quite refreshing. Perfectly drinkable, but doesn't really stand out as being amazing. It's just doing everything okay, which is fair enough.
you know, it's all you ask for really in a beer. I don't think I'd buy it again, but it's it's okay. If this was on offer in a supermarket, reasonably cheaply, I would probably get this over over some of the other stuff that's available. Probably, I'd say it's on a par with the Vast Diner, that type of stuff, and the Crombacker. It's it's about that that sort of level, but it's okay. It doesn't do anything nasty. It doesn't ring alarm bells with me, and there's no dodgy aromas. There's a slight sulfury aroma that comes from certain German beers. I'm not sure whether that's something to do with the water that they're actually using, but it ain't bad. It's just it's just a good solid lager. So what's the verdict on Furstenberg? It isn't too bad. I have tasted a hell of a lot worse, I will say that. It doesn't really stand out as being amazing. I think it was £2.50 a bottle. Now, once you start getting into that region, this doesn't become a first choice, or a choice, or an option even, because you're competing with some of the best German beers around that mark especially online. If you got this cheap in a supermarket, it wouldn't be a bad fridge filler, but it, it doesn't really stand out for me. It's just okay. I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it a six and a half out of 10. Um, it's, not, it's not a bad beer, but for the money, you know, when you're competing against the, the Augustinas and the Hofbrau's, and the Paulanas, you're nowhere near it with this. This is just, this is just average fridge filler fodder, if you like. Um, even the Feltins, I thought, was better than was better than this stuff. So yeah, I think six and a half out of ten is a fair is a fair mark for that. And um, am I going to recommend it? If it's cheap, if it's on offer, and I know you can get it in some supermarkets, I don't know whether they still do it in supermarkets, as I say, Asda, I think Tesco might have done it, I'm not sure whether they do it or not now. But if it's on special offer, if you can get that for a pound 50 a bottle, pound 80, between that, it ain't a bad, ain't a bad beer. It's competing with the Cronbackers and the Vast Diners. But, you know, once you start paying over two pound for it, give it a wide berth and get something decent. So yeah, six and a half out of 10, recommended with caution. And remember, beer is working class champagne.